What else did you get? That's it. Uh, I was okay. Been dumpstered. That's it. Okay. What else? That's it. This teen is a heartless killer who went on a shooting rampage that ended up killing two people. Police say that he was just driving around and randomly picking targets to shoot at. And his reason for doing that was because he thought it would be cool. How twisted is that? The son was actually with the father when, when the father purchased the firearm. Uh, actually picked out the type of firearm that he wanted his dad to, to buy. Why would a father buy a gun for his underage son? Let's look into the case of Conrad Schaefer, the teen with double life sentences who killed for fun. On Wednesday, June 26, 2013, at around 6 a.m., 17-year-old David Guero was walking near Central Avenue in Kissimmee, Florida, heading to the bus station where he was going to catch a bus to work. It was still dark outside, so he didn't notice the danger that was lurking in the shadows until it was too late. A guy was walking down the sidewalk, and a car went by, and it sounded like a ghost shot. The guy's laying here along the road. I don't know if they what. Witnesses said they saw a car pass by and heard a gunshot before the teen fell to the ground. David was immediately rushed to a nearby hospital, where he was unfortunately pronounced dead. The shooting shook the entire community as they tried to understand why someone would do that. Was this shooting random or targeted? And who was behind it? Very nervous, concerned about my grandkids and my kids and my son that lives with me and yeah. I don't know, it is shocking. Investigators said that David Guero was not a gang member, nor was he involved in any illegal activity. He was just going about his day when he was shot at for no apparent reason. An investigation into the shooting was launched, and the police searched the area for clues and asking anyone with information to come forward. As they were combing through the area with metal detectors, they found a spent shell casing, which was linked to David's death. The shell was also linked to other mysterious things that had been happening around the Oskella County, leaving many homes and cars riddled with bullets. Then on July 6, 2013, a week after the deadly shooting, police responded to a home in Poinciana where a 22-year-old university student by the name of Eric Rupnerin had been killed in his own home. Investigators said that Eric's mom found him lying in a pool of gore with a gun wound in the face and multiple knife wounds. Can you imagine just how traumatic that must have been for the mom? Eric's entire family was completely heartbroken and devastated, especially his grandma, who said that she had just spoken to him an hour before he was killed. 11.36, I spoke to my grandson over the phone, and I make sure he eats, and he told me, yes, ma, I'm okay. Surprisingly, police said that there was no sign of forced entry, meaning that Eric had probably let in the killer. Some items from his home, including a television, video game console, and a phone, were missing. Detectives were able to find a shell casing in the home, which later matched the one that had been used to kill David at the bus stop. Ballistic evidence showed that the bullets came from a 45 point caliber high point rifle that was bought just two weeks earlier by 53 year old Lothar Schaefer. Police were able to track down Lothar, but they were not prepared for what they were about to uncover. Lothar, who has a hearing disorder, told detectives that he bought the high caliber rifle for, get this, his 15 year old son, Conrad Schaefer. The son was actually with the father when, when the father purchased the firearm. Uh, actually picked out the type of firearm that he wanted his dad to, to buy. Apparently, Conrad was diagnosed with leukemia at the age of eight, and according to his parents, he was bullied because of his appearance during treatment. At some point, Conrad was befriended by some older guys in the area and was willing to do anything just to fit in. He would wait for his dad to fall asleep and then steal his car to go joyriding with his friends. But what started out as normal teenage rebellion soon turned deadly when his dad decided to buy him a gun and a hundred rounds of ammunition. The dad even took him to a shooting range, thinking that it would help boost his confidence after the alleged bullying. But apparently it did much more than that. This was around the time that the shooting spree began. And while Lothar came to learn about it, he reportedly took away the gun from Conrad, but never reported the incident to the police. He hid the gun in his closet, where police said Conrad could still access it easily. The result of uh, uh, 
Mr. Schaefer not securing his firearm is that we've had two homicides and, and what could have been tragically many more. Because of this, Lothar would later be charged with culpable negligence and allowing unlawful possession of a firearm. He pleaded no contest to the charges and was given four months in jail and two years of probation. Purchasing a firearm, the right to purchase a firearm is one thing, but you also have the right to make sure it's secure and kept out of the hands of those that should not have it. No Meanwhile, Conrad was arrested alongside three of his friends, including 20-year-old David Damas and Juan Sebastian Muriel and 17-year-old Victoria Rios. During his interrogation, Conrad seemed a little more concerned about going to jail than the fact that two people were dead. To get him to open up, the detective had to assure him that he might not necessarily go to jail because he was a minor when the crimes happened. We're juvie. That's just the way it is. So to be real with you right now, it, it's, it's, it's going to be up to a juvenile judge. And it's going to be up to what they think it's going to take for you to stop behaving that way. And that's not necessarily always jail time. You don't, you don't know if I could be doing life or not. You can't do life, dude, for a freaking felony like that. Are you kidding me? After a lot of persuasion, Conrad admitted that he and his friends had been going around shooting randomly at houses and cars in the area. The group had been involved in a total of 14 things, including one involving a police car before they were arrested. Were you the one doing this Not always. Okay. How many, okay, out of the next ones, how many would you say you would have been shooting? At least six or seven. Okay. Six or seven different places? However, when asked about Eric and David's murder, Conrad denied knowing anything about it, saying that he was not with the group when that happened. What else did you get? I said it a house. Okay. In a dumpster, I said. Okay. What else? I said. At some point, Conrad even broke down in tears and began asking for his dad, saying that he wanted to go home. What's bothering you now, Conrad? I think you know where it is. I know I just told you. I'm not going to do that. I'm just waiting for my dad, man. Your dad's fine. Your dad's fine. I mean, I don't even feel like living if I ain't going to see him. You ain't going to see him. Your dad's not going anywhere. He's fine. The detectives continued to push him to talk about what happened to David and Eric, but Conrad refused to reveal anything more, insisting that he had told them everything he knew. Gun. The gun's been taken out of my possession. Conrad? And hidden. Conrad, where, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't hidden very well. It was not hidden very well. No, okay. I, I put up my whole life down. Conrad? I put up my whole entire... Conrad. Conrad, look at me. I'm not, I Conrad, told, no, 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 I, I'm I not, I'm you, not. I just told you everything. Okay, Conrad, I'm you. not calling, listen to me, man. I'm not calling you a killer. I'm not calling you a murderer. Okay? But I'm like, I'm just going to be honest with you. Just like I told you, I will be honest with you. I'm not going to sit here and listen to you tell me that you have no clue who's the one that pulled that trigger with that kid. And I'm going to say that I believe you because I don't. After going back and forth with him for over 40 minutes, the detective decided to bring in Conrad's dad, hoping that it would get the teen to open up and tell the truth. Sorry, man. Sorry. Okay. Okay. At this point, Conrad broke down and apologized to his dad for what he did, but still refused to give a full confession, claiming that he was afraid of what the others might do to him if he testified against them. You are gonna have to have me testify or something. No. Test fire what? You will test fire what? Conrad. Against the person that did this. Con Conrad. No, I'm gonna get like like killed or something. It took a lot of convincing from his dad for Conrad to finally open up. He told detectives that he had only been hanging out with the other two guys, David and Juan, for about two to three months before they started shooting up houses. He said that he thought the guys were his friends, but apparently they were using him. Conrad said that he met Victoria about two weeks ago when she started living with David after running away from her own home. Uh, she's supposed to be on an Amber Alert or something. On the matter of who shot 
David Guero, and Eric, Conrad blamed everything on his co-accused, David Domus. He claimed that David was driving his dad's car when they spotted Guero that morning at the bus stop, and David decided to kill him. On that night, Eric was killed. Conrad claimed that David had borrowed his dad's car and gun and left with Victoria, saying that they were going to get rent money. He claimed that he didn't know what happened until the two came back and told him that they had killed someone. And he told us that he sh now, while Conrad might have tried to make himself appear less involved in the murders, detectives would learn something completely different. Apparently, on the morning that David Guerra was killed, the four suspects were driving around town in Conrad's dad's car when they spotted him at the bus stop. Then, Conrad reportedly thought that it would be fun to shoot a person, so he took out the rifle and pulled the trigger. Correct. Conrad is our shooter, and David was driving the vehicle. After their first taste of killing, the group waited until the night of July 3rd to rob, attack, and kill Eric. Victoria was apparently the one that came up with the idea of robbing Eric because he had been bragging about some money that he had gotten from his insurance. She already knew Eric as he had offered her a place to stay before. So she contacted him and tricked him into believing that she was going to sleep with him for money. But when she showed up at his doorstep, she wasn't alone. When Eric opened the door for Victoria, police said that she went in and let the others, who then forced Eric to give them all the money he had. They were furious to learn that he only had $300 on him. So according to Victoria, the guys pushed her outside and forced Eric to sit on the floor. Victoria said that she watched through the window as David did a countdown and shot Eric in the face. At this point, Victoria said that she went in and pointed out that Eric was still breathing. And that's when Conrad pounced on him with a kitchen knife and savagely jabbed Eric in the neck several times. Eric's last words were, please don't kill me. After mercilessly killing him, the group then ransacked his house and made away with several household items. Let them suffer and die and rot in jail. Live imprisonment, a hundred year each one of them. All four suspects were charged with two counts of first degree murder, home invasion with a firearm, and grand theft. Since Juan was not mentioned directly as an active participant in any of the murders, he was offered a plea deal of 10 years jail sentence if he agreed to testify against the others. This large kitchen knife was found resting on top of Eric Rupnarine's chest on July 4th. The 22-year-old Point Sienna man was also found with a gunshot wound to the face when Osceola County Sheriff's deputies arrived to his home on Mendoza Lane. According to evidence enclosed in this 300-page document, the state says these four young suspects, now charged with first-degree murder, devised a way to get rent money from Rupert Marine, who had apparently bragged about having $18,000 from a car accident. David was the first to go to trial in June 2015. During the trial, he denied Eric, claiming that he left the house when he saw Conrad with the gun. I think what happened to Eric is messed up, man, and he, he deserved justice, but I'm not the one that did it to him. At some point, he was even involved in a heated exchange with the prosecutor, telling him that he would look bad if it turned out that he was innocent. So you think that my public persona is affected by whether we convict you personally? Yes, because um, when you lost the Casey Anthony case, that made you look bad. David was eventually found guilty of killing Eric and was sentenced to life in prison. As for Victoria, because of the role she played in Eric's brutal murder, she was also found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to 30 years in prison. Conrad's trial was set to begin in January 2016, but before it started, he took a plea deal and pleaded guilty to two counts of first-degree murder. During his sentencing hearing, he gave a half-hearted apology to his victims' families. I was 15 at the time, and I'm really sorry for the things I've done. And I know I did wrong, and I know my apologies don't mean nothing to you. And I know they ain't gonna change how you feel about me. Understandably, the families didn't accept the apology, which they felt was not sincere. I request my grandson, he was my helper to me and my wife. At this time, my family and I had no intention to forgive the guilty because of such a heinous and brutal crime that was done to my grandson. Eric's mom also called him a monster who deserved to be locked up for life. A monster and deserved to rot in jail for lifetimes for what you did to my son, who was harmless, decent young man that was raised with lots of love and respect. I don't know about your upbringing, nor do I care, because you violated our home and trespassed uninvited 
when you should have been in your home, not ours. In the end, Conrad was given two life sentences for the murders of both David and Eric. But because of his age at the time of the crimes, he'll be eligible for parole after 25 years. Speaking right now on News 6 at noon, a teenager accused of going on a weeks long spree in Osceola County just learned his fate in court. Good afternoon, I'm Justin Mormuth. Two people were killed in those 2013 shootings when the suspect was only 15 years old. Investigators say Conrad Schaefer took part in nearly two dozen shootings. Now he'll be spending the rest of his life behind bars. What do you think about this case? Do you believe Conrad's dad deserved to get jail time for buying the gun? Let me know in the comment section and be sure to like and subscribe for more.